Today we have Eloy, and Eloy had, uh, had a previous gynecomastia treatment and he wasn't quite happy with the results. He finally found me on the internet and then uh, came from out of town. And uh, the great thing about Eloy, and he's a really kind of unique uh, man, well-spoken, but he uh, was obviously pretty tormented about the, uh, the gynecomastia. And in fact, he had his wife present when he uh, was first seen in the office. And what was great about her is that she was really animated. And so we got into all sorts of discussions about not only what that gynecomastia meant to him, but really what it meant to both of them and to the family as well, which was kind of uh, interesting. Now, I've always had intuition that kind of Kamasi has had a profound effect, but I always kind of focused in on the individual. And this is the first time I actually kind of broadened my horizon and looked at the whole big picture. In other words, the whole environment around Eloy. So I'm excited about today because I know this has affected him tremendously. Uh, secondary gynecomastias are more complicated in some degrees than the primary ones. We want to get in there, fix him up, and just get his life back together. That's the story. Hi, my name is Eloy Contreras. I'm 35 years old, and this is my girlfriend, Myra. Um, I'm 30 years old, and um, we've been together going on six years now. Um, we have three kids total, um, one 16-year-old. We have a nine-year-old and a two-year-old. This issue came up about a year and a half ago, and it's kind of thrown our, our lives in a limbo of sorts, kind of just, um, maybe not even a limbo, more of a standstill than a limbo. About a year ago, um, he started acting pretty, you know, pretty difficult, and um, he was very, you know, not himself. He was going through, you know, we were, we were having um, a lot of issues. We were, you know, we, I think we were just kind of reaching that point where, you know, we couldn't be together. I didn't know what was going on. Um, I didn't think, I never thought it was anything to do with you know any physical um, issues that we, he would have had, it was I thought he was just having you know more, we, we were going through a tough time in our lives. Um, I think after it was about was it two or three months into your problem? Yeah, I was dealing with it on my own, hoping you know I could kind of resolve it somehow uh, without letting anybody know, but uh, it was too evident to me that it wasn't going away anytime soon so I, uh, I started telling her what I was thinking, how I was feeling, and what I saw. I had uh, noticed a little, I guess it, I thought it was just puffy or I had hit myself or something and, and this left side of my chest kind of was just weird looking, it was just like, like puffed out more and it looked like I had uh, just done a, a chest routine or something and you know I, I hadn't done anything but it was only on this side and uh, I got worried started looking into it uh, you know what could have caused it what I could do to kind of uh, you know make that go away because I had never experienced it before except for when I was a chubby kid you know I obviously you know had a a fatty chest, but that's because you know I was overweight. But this time I was probably about 200 pounds. I do a lot of cardio for work, and uh, I just noticed this, and it had never looked like that before. I worked harder in the gym, and it seemed the more I worked on my chest, the even more puffed out it got. Uh, I, I looked up the causes, and it could be anything from you know, the food you eat because of the hormones that are in it to supplements you take in uh, over-the-counter uh, nutrition 
supplement store. And you know, I had supplemented before and I had taken pre-workouts and creatine and all these other, you know, different things that I really wasn't informed about, but I heard uh, it would help me in my training, so you know, I, I was definitely in for that because you know I was into trying to get a, a really good physique and uh, get strong and you know just gain that self-confidence that that I craved. About two years ago, uh, when I started noticing the difference, uh, I wasn't sure of what it was, so I, I looked it up and I looked into uh, abnormalities in a male chest, and uh, I read that it was called gynecomastia, something I had never heard of before. Uh, I probably still wouldn't know what it was uh, other than if I was looking into it. And uh, there's a lot of information about it, surprisingly to me. There's a lot of forums about it, guys going through the same exact things that I was going through. And it was kind of refreshing uh, at times, but then again, I was still having to live with it. So it wasn't really uh, something I was really getting like a good feeling that of safety or, you know, I can live with it. Uh, it was more of, you know, this actually happens and um, there's only one, uh, there's only one uh, way to fix it. You know, back in the days, Eli and me used to go salsa dancing. You know, that was one of our best hobbies. And you know, he would wear t-shirts all the time, and he would, you know, just go and be himself and be free. And you know, now it's um, first of all, you know, we we couldn't go. We, there's no way we can step foot anywhere now without him being critic, you know, critic or, or talked about. You know, people are always talking about his chest. That's that's a given. So you know, we end up just arguing and leaving mm -hmm. everywhere we go because you know I'm in I'm, you know I'm trying to tell him that it's not true you know and obviously it's true but yeah we've we've gone from you know being these this fun you know family a couple that used to do so many things to just being in this house for the past year um, you know I, I see the effects I feel it you know I feel the the way he's acted the way that he is you know he's changed so much you know he's you now he's he he's not the same person that he was a year ago you know he's 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 quiet you know he's silent you know, he's um you know he didn't even show up on time to the baby's party because he couldn't find a decent teacher to wear you know he doesn't wear t-shirts no more you know he doesn't dress up no more you know, it's just it's really depressing to see somebody like that you know we've had a very great you know relationship we've you know we, we were both two you know two people that were severely attracted to each other um, now it's like you know he's you know there was just I, I remember like months that he would not even take off his t-shirt at all or he rather not have intimacy if this was going to be a case um, I couldn't really touch his area because if I, if I t touched the chest you know I was kind of making it a point that I was that he did have a problem so now um, you know I'm, I'm afraid to even touch him I'm afraid to because I don't know if it's going to affect the mood, or if, I don't know if it's if I'm offending him. You know, it's it's really hard. It's our, um, I, I, to me, I'm very self-conscious about it now. Like very self-conscious. I mean, before I didn't really think there, he had a problem. Now I know he has a problem.
After the surgery, I'm really looking forward to just getting my complete life back. Obviously, my family life is great in here, in, in this house. This is my freedom area. This is for freedom for me to, to just be free and not worry about anything else. But after the surgery, it's going to be uh, perfect to me. Uh, I can deal with pretty much all of life's problems head on. Uh, after that, I can you know, pretty much feel like I can overcome anything because I, I feel uh, that I've gone through hell for a year and a half. And not everybody, like I've said before, not everybody will understand that phrase. Not everybody will be able to, you know, see me and say, that guy didn't have anything. That guy is perfectly fine. Because if you actually have had gynecomastia and have dealt with it for more than a week, then you'll know the hell I'm talking about. You'll know that you have no confidence, you have pretty much uh, in your own mind, your own mind is your own worst enemy. And after the surgery, I just hope to, to come back and um, be better than I ever have been. You know, push myself harder in the gym, push myself harder with my family, uh, push myself harder in everything because I know that I've gotten a second chance to be free and to be able to be all that I can be. I really pray that after this surgery, I mean, I think my hopes are really high for the surgery. I think um, I want him to, to be the person that he was before. I, I want him to enjoy life. Um, he's a very fun guy and, you know, he's just letting his life go because of, 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 of this problem and this is consuming our life and it's an ongoing subject and, you know, I just want to, I just want to have, you know, I just want to have dinner with him. And I want to go out on a date and not worry about what he's going to wear. You know, I've dealt with it and, you know, I want him to be happy. And, I mean, I love him. We need to be, you know, we're here for him, but he needs to, he needs to be happy too. You know, he needs to be going to work and be happy about going to work. You know, he, he deserves to enjoy time with us too. And to have, you know, that, that freedom, the freedom to just wear a teacher, because he hasn't worn a teacher in over a year. I feel like I've taken uh, one of life's worst punches and I always tell her you know we're still standing we're still together and uh, we're able to take on you know whatever comes our way.